hit me with the opening statement. <coughs> opening statement, please, Coach. Okay. Um, opening statement is just really proud of these guys. You know, they uh, they played a very, very good team tonight. And uh, we took it to them early. And, and uh, I was very, very pleased with our defensive effort more than anything. I mean, this team can, this team can get you. Uh, we never really let them get in a rhythm, which was – which was a credit to our defense. I thought that our seniors and, and uh, I, you know, our whole our whole team did, did a good job. Um, uh, you know, Stu does a fantastic job with his guys, and and uh, so I feel fortunate to to uh, come out of this game uh, victorious based on on uh, the momentum that we've had coming into the game. Because you know, you always are concerned with you know, when is there going to be a dip. Because it's, it's, it's tough to just continuously get better and better and better and better and better every game until the end of the season. We usually have a, uh, a sidestep there. Um, but we haven't had it yet, so let's, let's postpone it until next season. Questions? Where would you rank this defensive performance for this season, Coach Menzies? Well, the first half, I'd rank it best, best half of, of the year. Uh -huh. uh, and the second half was probably in the top five. You know, yeah. it, it was uh, outside of the last five minutes. Um, I thought uh, we did a fantastic job of, of um, you know, pressuring the ball, um, you know, dealing with the screens and, you know, putting ourselves in a position to, to be there in a good position defensively. I think they recognized uh, personnel very well. I think our guys did a good job of, of understanding how to guard different guys. And I think it was a, you know, it was a fantastic group effort. I mean, now, you, now you just got to, <laughs> you got to see if you can bottle it and, and, uh, drink the same elixir on Saturday. I thought if you took care of the ball and kept them off the uh, offensive glass, which you did in the second half. Right. Because that's what killed us in the first half on glass. Ten, ten offensive free throws. That kept them in the game. Yeah, no question. Yeah. That and then, uh, I mean, you know, the big kid hits a three. Yeah. At the, you know, going into half. Um, I mean, otherwise, we're up eight at the half, which I would have been happy with the, I was happy with the five, but I've been more happy with the eight. But, you know, we, uh, we got a good thing going here. We got great support. Uh, you know, marketing did a great job tonight. And got got the student got the students out in full force. I thought uh, that that made a difference. I think that um, you know we're we're um, we're just growing in a lot of areas, and, and the whole program is growing. And, and it's just a good time to be an Aggie. I think you know the sky's the limit for this team if they can continue if they can continue you know along this path, obviously. So. You know, you always worry about that again. As I said, as a head coach, you're, you're like, okay, what are the potential stumbling blocks? And we've got to be proactive in our thought process and, yes. and, and planning to, to deal with those. So, you know, you, the locker room is great. You know, you got some guys that didn't play as many minutes as they normally play. you got some guys that didn't get in a game. And they're all smiles. And they're a big family. And they love each other. And, and they support each other. They all want to play a bunch of minutes. But, unfortunately, uh, the game doesn't allow us to do that sometimes. You get your best product on the floor. You have to have... Uh, uh, shorter rotations on certain games, so uh, unfortunately for those guys not that did get a chance to to uh, contribute, you know. But but fortunately for me, I've got great character kids in the locker room that take care of business. Marvin, what are some of the key elements to how you guys are playing early compared to right now? What have what have you done to get things? Well, I've said repeatedly that uh, you know this game is not a complicated game. You, you have to do certain fundamentally sound things. Night in, night out, in order to give your talent a chance to win. Uh, you know, coaching uh, X's and O's is, uh, you can steal a few plays that way and steal a few buckets, but at the end of the day, I'll take the, I'll take the, I'll take the talent. Um, and I felt like earlier in the season, we, we had the physical gifts, but we weren't doing the things that we needed to do repetitively, like locking out and taking care of the ball, throwing 100% passes rather than trying to get home runs. I mean, we still did that tonight. I mean, we, we get a brand new possession in case he tries to sling it to Tyrone through two people, and I'm like, that's a home run. We're, we're, we're trying to score off a of base hit, you know. Uh, Ronaldo had one where, where, where he, you know, in the second half where he um, had a turnover that was similar. It, it's, just, it's just a sense of the game that, that, that comes from playing and, and understanding time to score, and, and, and there's a maturity involved, and, and we're maturing, and I think that's the difference from early season to now. Sim um, had a big effect on the game without scoring, like blocks and uh, rebounding. Talk about just how he uh, guarded the paint. Oh, yeah, I mean, he was, uh, you know, Sim was able, I mean, you, you got to think about how much man we're playing, and for a, for a 7 five, 5 guy to be able to, 
to conceptually play ball screens and, and move that frame around. And his conditioning is obviously getting better. I mean, outside of, you know, he sat out, I don't know how long, the, those last few minutes, but um, he played he played 27 minutes. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the most minutes he's played, I think, all year. If I'm not mistaken, right, Tiff? Ties it. Yeah, ties it, so Tiff knows it. So, um, <laughs> you know, and if he doesn't get hurt, he probably goes 28 or 29 minutes tonight. I mean, and you look at his uh, conditioning from where he is to where he is now. I mean, he's, he's obviously going to be a factor with his height and his, his court IQ as long as he continues to, you know, head down that right road. Seems like he's blocking shots now where before he was altering them. Right. Now he's really he did, he still, I think he did a little bit of both tonight. I think he altered some shots and he blocked some shots. Uh, and what did he end up with, two or three blocks? Five. Seven. Jeez, seven. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I expect him to block it every time. <laughs> That's great. I mean, he's, uh, is that a career high tip? Ties it. Thank you. It's uh, <laughs> my radar. So, <clears throat> you know, but 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 honestly, you know, when you look at Sims' development, it, it's a it's an integral part in our in our overall progress. You know, um, you know, you asked about what's one of the differences between the team earlier and now, and I, I would say that Sims is also a piece of that equation. How's he doing? Phase. From sorry, Jason, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he got elbowed. I think I think uh, Shaw or somebody's elbow caught him when he came down. It was an unintentional uh, incidental contact deal. Was that the elbow caught him when he came down right on his nose and uh, hit him in here in this area? So he was he had a bloody nose and a you know, jawbone above his jaw was uh, above his upper lip was was where he took the contact. So he um, was a little shaken up, but he's a tough kid. He bounced right back. He was ready to go back in, but we thought we better just. Just hold him out at that at that point based on the uh, time and score and, and, and just a precautionary to make sure he was okay. Just potential con concussion things and things like that. So. San Jose State's a little different. Style. A lot of different. <laughs> yeah, San Jose State is uh, a real challenge for us. You know the way they play. Uh, did they lose tonight? I haven't seen a score. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, and I, and I think that, you know, I hate playing teams right after they lose. Coaches go crazy and the kids <laughs> play their best game. So, <coughs> excuse me, but, um, you know, they got a great score in Kenny. Um, they've got some bigs. they got a little bit more depth than, they, than they've had in, in, in recent history. And uh, they're playing people really tight. And I know they, you know, they played this team very, very well on the road, which, you know, is a tough place to play in Logan without uh, 36 points in scoring that they had when they had a couple guys left at home. So, now they can they can really light it up. It's a team that even if you get up on, you're going to have to you're going to have to make sure that you uh, manage the game for a full 40 minutes against them. So we're we're going to need the uh, we're going to need the students in the house again, and, and obviously the community is always welcome. <laughs> Coach, what do you guys do to prep for San Jose? For Utah State for, for San Jose? Oh, what do we do for prep? Um, it's a it's a much different scout than than the uh, Utah State scout. Uh, fortunately, we had Idaho uh, right before this one. Uh, this game, so they're similar in their style of play, similar in their their defensive scheme and offensive scheme. So, I thought that was another reason that we were um, very prepared uh, tonight. Uh, San Jose State, to answer your question, is is a team that um, you know we're familiar with who they are, but they've got some new pieces, and I think the personnel component uh, is 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 one that needs to be the emphasis in such a short turnaround. You know, it's, it's hard to it's hard to get your guys to to learn a whole team system. Um, in, in such a short period, but but you can lean on the things that they they've done frequently lately, and then you can take that and you can add the uh, personnel, understanding what they do and their strengths and weaknesses from man to man. Uh, and if you can if you can you know ascertain that information and then get the guys to retain it in a in a, in a short period of time, you give yourself a little bit of an advantage. Marvin, uh, beginning of the second half, when Banjo hit a couple of those shots early, how much did that loosen things up offensively for you? Uh, well, you know, Bonds is a, Bonds is a, he does so much for us other than scoring, you know, mm -hmm. he just, he just, uh, people don't realize how his length and his athleticism and, and uh, now he's, he's talking and he's getting guys into places, he's just doing so much as a senior, he's playing like a senior, I remember Justin Hawkins, his senior year, about mid-year, he hit a, he hit a group, you know, and he, um, he was, he, he really became a leader, you know, uh, much more verb vocal than, than Bonge is, but, but Bonge is doing that same thing, but more like Ernst in the sense of, uh, by his, by his uh, 
his court presence and his, his practice demeanor and his, and his, uh, his professional, professionalism right now, his approach to practice, his approach to, to the games, his preparation. All those things those younger guys are, are, are looking at. So I do think, you know, when he hits shots, then, uh, you know, that helps us, obviously. But, but I also think it's, it's all those other little things that he's been doing that have really got our guys, um, you know, rolling with them, you know. In the game when you were kind of burning up some clock? Yes. Did you, did you pull them out of that for a little bit? Or they pulled them was out it just the circumstances of how the game to um, Hit me one more time, Jim. What do you mean? Well, it seemed like you were slowing down the clock for a little while. And there right. were a few plays where, I don't know, somebody got open. Oh, I got you. I got you. No, I think, um, you know, we have a philosophy. We're still going to attack if we have numbers. And so I think that when the point you're referencing to was that we sped it up for a little bit there again towards the end. Um, but that's you know you, you don't want to you don't want to put kids on on their heels too much when they're when they're playing well. But at the same time you've got to be selective. So say for example if Daniel's got a one on one early in the game and it's a close game, I want him to take that guy. If it's a two on one, you know, then then no. Well late in the game if you got a one on one and you're up by a lot, well. Let's let's pull that out. Let's run the clock. We can get that one on one late. You know, we can get those. We're gonna get good looks, predominantly if you every possession if you if you take the time and execute offensively. So, I, I was really pleased with the half court management as well. I thought that the uh, latter part of the game, the guys did a really good job of uh, of, uh, of managing the clock and getting getting you know some very good shot, very good looking shots. I mean, the guys we were making shots late that really deflates a team when you're up and you make a shot. You got a guard for 30 seconds, 32 seconds, and then they, and then the team scores. I mean, it just kind of takes your, uh, you know, it takes your. I was gonna say your breath away, but that's too sexy. Uh, it takes uh, your momentum away or your fight away. You know, it kind of, it kind of, uh, it kind of just zaps you. And that's what, that's what our guys did tonight. And so that was good. That was good to see. Coach Emery Coleman, obviously making news. Is there anything enemies you can do to support him or? Well, we would support Emory in, 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 in life, period. Uh, you know, we're, we're having the athletic department address all those questions based on um, uh, just the newness of it all to us. We don't have a lot of information at this point. We're still gathering, fact-finding, and, and uh, James Hall and, uh, will, will work out of our office uh, to, uh, to field all the questions. But uh, it was just a sad situation with, uh, with uh, what happened in the incident. I, I don't even know. Know exactly when it occurred. I know it was a long time ago, over a year ago, and I'm not quite sure how this, all, you know, is all unfolding. It's kind of very fluid for it right right now. So, uh, you know, it's a sad sad deal, obviously. And uh, you know, my heart goes out for the family that lost the, the gentleman that uh, was involved in the accident. So, um, at this point, we're like I said, we're fact finding, and we're going to let the uh, the athletic department, you know, administrators handle that. Is he still officially uh, in the program then? Well, that's that's all. All of that is to be determined. You know, all of that is to be determined based on the fact finding process. You know, there's some, there's rules and there's policies that will take it out of my <coughs> hand uh, uh, at at the felony charge level. So um, so now we have to go through processes and to, to, to find out. You know, like I said, what what the deal is basically. We, we just don't know. I know there's uh, you know there's a police report that has been. Uh, uh, put together and, you know, we just need to see what, not just what the police report says, but what the courts say. So it's, uh, you know, it's, I, would, I would caution people to pass judgment until uh, until it's been fully investigated, and, and at that point we'll uh, uh, assess the situation and make our determination from there. All right, anything else for Coach? Thank you.